something come after it. There's another, that's a rookie. Welcome back guys and girls. We're streamside on one of the most beautiful streams in the world here in New Hampshire. And I got some more goodies from Postfly. This is their guide series box and uh, I'm, I've already opened it because it's from last month and I've been so stinking busy that I haven't had a chance to open it yet. So uh, let's open it right now. And this company is right out of Massachusetts. So the guide box is like 50 bucks and if you want to save $10 on your first box, use uh, Bendit 10 and you can click that link below like, obvious, like always. Uh, so let's kind of go through the box, kind of see what's in there real quick. And then we're going to set up and show you guys how to use the simplest nymph rig that you could possibly use. So a lot of people are scared of like nymphing because it's, it's complicated. You can get really crazy with it with like three flies and a dropper and all sorts of stuff depending on your regulations, of course. So let's get the, the box set up for nymphing and get the fly rod set up and let's go tackle this, uh, this trophy stream real quick. So we got the nail knot tool. We got a little uh, how-to manual. So we have the Arbor, Arbor knot and the Albright knot. And then we have some uh, pocket water and some like where to find fish and how to fish. So I'm gonna kind of go over these things as, as we're nymphing, of course. And I'm kind of teach you guys where to nymph um, along the way here. Then we have a bunch of flies, which are gonna go right in the fly box here. And they also, like I always say, what's great about Postfly is they have them all kind of labeled underneath or on the back, which is great for people that are, are new to fly fishing. So we got a blueing olive, a couple different types, tungsten surveyor, high-vis blueing, BWD, sow bug, sparkle hackle, waltz worm, and a WD-40. I love fly fishing names. Uh, we have a net release which I'm actually looking to replace mine, so we're gonna do that real quick. With new magnets, we have some brand name by Loon, uh, and these are just uh, forceps. Trout Unlimited, some other stuff. A 5X nine foot tapered leader, which we're gonna pop on. But first we gotta tie uh, the loop knot and we have a sticker which is going to go on the cooler here in a little bit there we go and then when i want to use it i can just pop it off like that and scoop and they got the little uh eye opener there which is kind of nice put those in the bag and then we're going to put on that new leader so there's a fatter end right there we're going to take that and we're going to uncoil it And this is a pretty supple leader, I can already feel it. So it's not fluorocarbon, which is okay, it's mono. And we want to un unwrap it all the way, because if you just try to like pull it out, it'll get tangled immediately. And then you want to just do that. And see how it's all slinky? Let's just take that. You gotta make a face while you're doing it too. You just gotta stretch that out. It'll cut through your hand before you break it. So that gets all the all the little coils out of it. So it's just plastic, it's just stretching. And then we're gonna do the, the loop knot on the back. And we're gonna take, so this is the welded loop on our fly line. And take the new leader, slide it over, hole in one basically like that. And then we're gonna take the end that goes to the fly and slide it back through. And obviously you want to pop the knot through and there's your loop-to-loop -loop connection. So let me show you what you've been waiting for, which is the simplest nymph rig out there, which is just an indicator, a couple of split shot, and then a fly. I don't like using split shot, but the water is going pretty fast right here, so we're going to use a split shot. Actually, we're going to start, yeah, we're going to start with the waltz worm, which is this guy right here camera can focus on that it's tiny tiny and we're gonna tie our fly on real quick with just a uh, normal clinch knot 
or fisherman's knot, if you want to call it that. And there's one thing that didn't come with the, uh, the box is an indicator. So I use two different types. I use uh, thingamabobbers, which is like the older style one. And I also like to use uh, airlocks, or now they're made out of biodegradable foam. So we're gonna use the right size bobber, or right size indicator for the, for the job here. So I have a very light fly on, so I'm gonna tie with a very, or use a very light indicator. And I'm gonna start it at uh, a couple feet down, or up. And there's that, and then we're gonna put, we're going to send this out first with out split shot on to see where it's riding, because you don't wanna lose a fly instantly. So uh, let's go do that. We want to fish anywhere that it's slightly slower than anywhere else. So like right here is good. And I'm not, I'm using my feet to cast. Don't be scared of walking in the water. It's not going to hurt you as long as it's safe to do so. And especially with stockfish, they'll actually be attracted to that indicator that's plopping on the water. So, so a good way to tell if your fly is riding low enough as you guys probably can't see this, is when I think the drift is done, I can lift up and I want my fly to be ahead of the indicator. And if it's not, we want to add a couple of split shot to it. All right, let's put a split shot on. And I like to use uh, Loon, Loon Black Drops. They're uh, tin. They're not cheap, but they work great. And this is uh, 0.2 grams. And I like it like six to eight inches above my, uh, my fly. Oh, there's a fish. Oh. There we go. I don't know how I'm gonna land him. There we go. Fish in the net, guys. Fish in the net. Put up the hook out. Sayonara. The little bug wasn't working. They wanted something a little bit more meaty. So this is just a, uh, a conehead woolly bugger. Got him. Got him, got him, got him. I had to poke him right in the face with it, but I got him. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, that is a big rainbow. I had to tight line that one a little bit, but that's okay. He was hungry. And then we let him go. I took the indicator off there uh, because it was way too close to get a natural drift. So I just tight lined that fish till it came out and bit. So that was pretty epic, but the indicator rig with a, with a bobber on top is still the, the easiest way to nip, just the easiest way. And the woolly bugger, if you want to start with a woolly bugger, that's probably the easiest way. White is easy as well because you can see it and you can see if it's actually drifting the way it's supposed to. So let's keep fishing. I should be able to see trout in there if I was to guess. Oh, there's multiple fish in there. Oh, that's a bigger fish. That would be a salmon. That would be a salmon. And that's gonna take a second. Ooh. Doesn't really realize he's hooked yet. If he wanted to run, he'd run. I got you. Some nice chrome there, guys. And girls. And that is a little tiny uh, balanced leech with a hot spot, tungsten bead. 
and I'm gonna retie that because that's all frayed right there. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Get the release. We're gonna turn this video into the two easiest ways to basically use nymphs. This is an eight and a half foot four weight fly rod. Uh, it's not a nymphing rod. It's not one of those Euro nymphing rods. It's just a regular rod. I am missing bites because of that. There needs to be more sensitivity. Uh, but catch a fish. This is one of my best days yet. So we're gonna go downstream because we haven't really walked that far. Rainbow. Yank him out of there before he blows the pool up completely. Nice looking fish. There he goes. And all we're doing is using that nine foot leader and we're just dragging the fly through there. until it gets tight, and then we're gonna set the hook. Oh, just saw something come after it. There's another, that's a brookie. Three species out of one pool. They just bulldog. And they are, Meat eaters. And I can see I can see in this pool pretty good. I can see fish come in and out of where I can see them and not see them. So I know they're in the faster water. And I feel like there's a bunch of them down there. Oh, that fish came up for it. Oh, there's so many fish down there. But all I'm doing is high sticking it through there and dragging it through. Oh, he missed, didn't miss it. He didn't like it. All right, since we've uh, already used up a lot of that leader and a lot of it's in the tree up there, let's tie on another section of 5X on here. I'm using a blood knot. We got a different fly on, longer leader. And I'm gonna trim my tags off, but not all the way off. Another rainbow. Stay out of the current, buddy. Putting a lot of stretch on that four-way. There we go. Right, there it goes. Oh, he was right there. Oh, he was on it. He was on it, he was on it, he was on it. That is a bigger fish. Um, he's on the drag. So that one is hooked in the bottom jaw just because he missed it. Oh, and it hooks out. There he goes. Oh, I just missed one. Just a very slight pull. That's another one. Oh, there's a monster down there, for sure. Ah! Hope you guys saw that.
There's a brookie trying chasing the rainbow. Another one. So the fly I'm using now is, I don't know, it's just got a purple, black, black bead head. Just really works. And then I got one split shot above it, uh, 0.2 grams, just to help drag that through there. And I'm just using that nine foot leader. Just dragging it through there. And I'm probably missing, I'm missing a bunch of bites just because this rod's not very sensitive, but. I might put one extra split shot on to get me down at the head of the pool, just because I think that there's more salmon in here. Oh, that was definitely a fish and I slept on it. I might need an attractor bug above this, so this is not very big. Oh, another big fish. Another big rainbow. Jeez, I never knew they stocked this many rainbows. Oh, hooks out already. There he goes. Another one. These there, bud. Where are you going? Nice cromer. Hooks up. Back in. So where I'm standing is a little bit too fast for trout. But where I'm going is not. And first cast. There you are. Kind of a disaster because I'm falling down here. There it goes. So let's do a little river breakdown. We got water coming from my left and my right. We have a rock here and a rock there and a deep pool there, which I fished before. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna stand on this side and we're gonna fish all of this. None of that right there. We might throw up there real quick. Then we're gonna get behind that rock and cast into that pool. So that's the breakdown. So we don't spook any fish. Oh, there's a big rainbow right there. Oh, I just saw a flash at my fly. All right, I can see fish, but they're not biting. So let's change flies. All right, we change back to the, the waltz worm, something a little bit shinier and smaller. Oh, ah, he popped off. All right, let's put the indicator back on because I can see fish, but I can't get a decent drift. So let's start up high. Got him that time. There's like five or six in there.
switch of hands, unhook and release. Most of these fish have been, I can see them, they're at the tail of the pool. So this is a little more complicated to get indicator. Split shot, split shot, fly. Now I could put up to two more flies on here, but I don't like untangling things, so I just don't do that. I knew there had to be one behind there. He's a nicer one for sure. Get him on the surface. Nice rainbow. Well guys, I'm exhausted. We cleaned house on the river today. That's probably my, my best day on this particular river in the last 12 years. Cleaned house, Euro nipping style, which is basically just tight lining. This is a normal rod. Uh, like I was saying before, it'd be better if it was a nine foot five weight and just absolutely cleaned house with nymphs. Um, if you wanna get your post fly subscription box, use the Bend It 10 to save off your first, $10 off your first purchase. Thanks again for watching. Hope you guys enjoy.